Hello, kia ora, g'day. I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with your Climate Watch update for the month of May, covering New Zealand, Australia, and the Southwest Pacific. Let's have a look and see what's going on as we kick off this month. There are two main weather features, the large low around New Zealand, and the enormous high around Australia. The high is the most dominant feature because while this is bringing uh, hurricane force winds to the lower part of the North Island, heavy rain and snow, it's only there for a day or so and then it zips off to sea because in comes the high and that dominates the New Zealand area as we go into the first week of May. Behind it, there is another high coming in and unfortunately for those people in drought around southern Australia and it's mostly in these areas where you're seeing the brightest of the white and that is the highest of the air pressure at the moment. These areas are not seeing much in the way of rain. There may be a few showers but it's not enough to really make any impact and I'm sorry to say that be so blunt but that's what we're seeing. We're not seeing at this stage any big rainmaker on the way. Not yet. But the optimistic part, the silver lining if you like, we're going into winter. It's only another month away and that usually muddies things up down here south of Australia. That brings a better chance of rain into that zone. Let's have a look at the May climate highlights. So we actually start by going backwards. Um, so we've got the latest now out on March which was showing sea surface temperatures around Australia were the second warmest on record since records began 125 years ago. Now that's interesting to note that that's following on from the five previous, uh, previous months, which were the warmest on record. So while that is not great news, it's better than that. It's just a little bit notched, one notch down, but still showing conditions are well above average sea surface temperature wise, around three degrees above average in the west, the south and other parts of the east of Australia, and one to three degrees above normal around parts of New Zealand. We'll show you those maps in a moment for New Zealand showing the marine heat wave. What that means is, Extra warmth in the sea, when a low pressure system crosses over it or a thunderstorm, it's got a little more fuel in it to keep it going and make it a bit more uh, interesting to watch or dramatic. Enzo, do we have El Nino or La Nina? As the Bureau has been saying for a year now, over a year in fact, we are in neutral. Very different to the New Zealand government who talked about La Nina breathlessly for over a year and it never happened. So we are in a neutral zone there. And that's consistent not just with the Bureau of Meteorology, but many international global models. And what that means for us in our part of the world, no real change coming to the weather pattern we've got. So that's either good or bad news, depending on who you are and where you live. Indian Ocean Dipole, that is the Indian Ocean's version of El Nino and La Nina, that is also neutral. So there is not a lot really happening up here in the tropics of the Pacific or over in the Indian Ocean that is going to dramatically change our setup in New Zealand. The Southern Ocean is pretty stormy at the moment. That's expected as we head in towards winter, but the storms are being neatly packed down towards Australia due to these big high pressure systems. These are like the ceiling of a house. So these lows can only expand up until they hit that red line and then they can't go much further than that. And that's what fuels the big autumn windy westerlies that are mostly blowing south of us at the moment. So windy stuff around the country here on May the 1st, there is that low. But here is another big change that we've seen in our weather pattern over the last, what, couple of months, is high pressure was like this. It was connected. One high would come through, the next one immediately hot on its he uh, heels. And they all kind of joined up. That's the reason why Australia's in drought, severe drought in some areas. But what you're seeing in the Tasman, New Zealand area is a break between each high. So you get a big powerful high, four or five days of not much happening, and then the next low comes through and lately they've been coming out of the subtropics and we're still seeing energy up there as we go into the month of May. So we may not yet be done with these sorts of lows, but really big highs and that is the most powerful one as we kick off the first day of May. By the 2nd of May, that big high is now over here, east of New Zealand. Still enormous, very powerful air pressure stretching up to Fiji and down into the southern part, south of New Zealand. So that's huge. That placement encourages the tropical airflow up here to come down into New Zealand. And yes, that is another low coming in behind it. It's not 100% locked in, but we could be seeing another low pressure zone dropping southwards or forming in this area as it comes on in. And at this time of the year, you can get lows that rapidly deepen around New Zealand and the Tasman. For our Australian viewers, not a lot of uh, information to tell you because high pressure is dominating, so there's not a lot of change going on. You'll see the easterlies at the top of Australia, northerlies coming down at times, and on that eastern side, still more of those south to southeasterlies, which have been off and on now for many weeks driving in those showers. And our final map for the middle of the month, this is as far out as we can go with sort of reliability. So what you do to try and imagine the fourth week is just imagining everything you see here 
slowly drifting eastwards. So another huge high coming in from Australia, that is the one we just showed you, back over New Zealand, which means New Zealand looks like it's going to have at least a couple of fairly settled weeks going into the month of May with rainmakers in, in there too. Most likely New Zealand leaning warmer than average based on this forecast. And notice sort of a bit of a dent in the isobars to the north here, bit of a sign that low pressure is still trying to go south into that high. Uh, and you do see a low here. Now that could be a bit of optimism. It looks like a cutoff low that's trying to form. That's what we want to see in these southern states. It'd be better to have a proper um, you know, thunderstorm event come through. You never know what that might trigger. But at the moment, there's a lot of high pressure. So we may have to wait until we get into the end of May to see what's coming behind that little high pressure zone there, that, that tall one that's moving on through. Let's have a look at soil moisture anomalies here in New Zealand. So this is where we were about a month or so ago, a lot of dry around the country. Here's how we are now. And this does not include the rain over the last couple of days. Uh, the Niwa soil maps along with the drought index maps that often are delayed a few days, which is a little frustrating, but that's what you need to capture all the information. You've got to wait a few days. So plenty of rain in the top parts of both of the main islands. And obviously, as we record this today, Canterbury and Marlborough are seeing some very heavy rain from that subtropical system that's moving through. So here is the New Zealand drought index map. Like I say, it's unfortunate that the data is sort of takes so many days to show up. This is still showing what happened about four days ago. But you are seeing a huge reduction in the dry zones around New Zealand. South Waikato, King Country around National Park, Whanganui, parts of uh, Hawke's Bay and Wairarapa still into that sort of dry to very dry zone. Hopefully the rain that is falling as the, at the time I'm recording this has made a real dent in this and it's probably not so much of a problem moving forward, but we do still need some more rain for some of those dry areas, believe it or not. So this is how we look with the marine stuff around New Zealand. So marine heat waves all around the North Island, we're talking about a moderate to strong marine heat wave. So that's the reason why the temperatures in the sea are up a little bit. And again, that's what helps spark some of these thunderstorms and big downpours that we've been seeing around, particularly the North Island recently. Not so much along the eastern side of the South Island, about normal over there and over on the West Coast, moderate, even strong here up around uh, north of Westport going up to Farewell Spit. Here is another map of the departure from normal for temperatures. So, you know, warmer than average goes that way, colder than usual goes that way. So you do see a little bit of blue here and there, especially around Canterbury. But otherwise, most of the places are warmer than average, around one, two, two and a half degrees above usual. There are even some spots that are getting around three degrees above normal. That is significant. Two degrees is considered significant above average. So warmer than usual at the moment. Next map, this is the temperature one. This is also a departure from normal. The red is not designed to alarm you. Some people always accuse the Bureau of that. It's not, here's the scale. It goes up to, you know, drier than usual goes red, colder, than, uh, wetter than usual goes blue. So what you're seeing here is a high chance in the red that temperatures are going to exceed what is normally recorded at this time of the year. That isn't surprising to most weather forecasters, so that is expected. But you see here, normal temperatures expected further to the north in the tropical area, perhaps more cloud uh, helping to do that. And here is rainfall for May, again, departure from normal. Blue shows that it's wetter than usual, and the brownie color sort of shows that it is drier than usual. So this is not a map that you want to see if you're in drought. And I'm sorry to sort of be blunt to you about that, the fact that there is not really any rain of any significance coming through yet. But I emphasize yet, the silver lining with me is that we're going into winter soon, that muddies up things south of you and you never know what could come on in. But I do hear you that, you know, this is, this is an ongoing drought and it's just getting worse and worse and worse each week. Many populated areas in the east aren't having the same problem. Plenty of showers, keeping things wet. Some of you writing about that to us on YouTube, complaining about it. But you do also see the eastern side of Tasmania missing out on some of that rain. But these northern areas look like they'll have normal rainfall, if not even above normal, places like Townsville and Cairns and coastal parts of Queensland. So that's just the Bureau's uh, look at it. Here is the rainfall map, the next 16 days. This is the expected map. It's not always guaranteed, but this is the expected one. In the black boxes, these are the areas with no rain at all for the next two weeks or more, or just a, a very small amount. So that is not a great map, but this might give you a little bit of positivity. I, it's not 100% locked in. I'm always nervous about these borderline kind of setups, but you do have a chance in some of those drought areas of getting 20 or 30 millimeters over just the next two weeks. That would be great if you got it. But look, the wetter stuff 
along the eastern side of Australia, and then around the tropical zone north of New Zealand, some more low pressure coming through. Now, whether or not that hits New Zealand or not, in the next weekend, a second weekend of May, that isn't completely locked in. Why is that? Because the big high pressure zones out of Australia are bulldozing across. So the green and the yellow you see across the Tasman is only 10 to 20 millimeters over the next two weeks. Pretty dry for the Southern Tasman Sea in May as we go to the end of autumn. That's a pretty dry forecast. A lot of high pressure coming out of Australia. Then you've got these rainmakers to the north. See the line, it kind of goes from northwest to northeast. That's where it gets borderline. Will the heavy rain fall out at sea or will it come in and hit land? That part isn't locked in, but you see parts of Hawke's Bay, Otago, even the west coast around Greymouth seeing very low rainfall for this time of the year. But hit and miss with some of this heaviest rain all around you still. Here's a closer view of that. I probably should have talked, showed you this back when I was doing that part. But you can see here, you, you know, that's 150 millimetres between Taranaki and Farewell Spit. 100 millimetres here around Gisborne, another 100 millimetres around Northland. This rain here is mostly the rain that's falling at the moment, so I'm not really including that in the outlook. Uh, but these dry spots in the yellow and the, sorry, the green and the, and the blue, bottom of the scale here, the green and the blue, that's not much rain. So this map makes me not as confident as usual because when you've got blobs of dry and blobs of very heavy rain, all it takes is for it to move a little bit you know, left or right, and it changes the forecast. But you can see New Zealand's got a much better chance of rain than a lot of our Australian neighbours do. So there we go. That is all from me for this Climate Watch update for the month of May. It's looking warmer than average. It's looking drier than average in a number of places, but not necessarily extremely dry in New Zealand or eastern coastal parts of Australia. So we'll keep you up to date in our normal uh, weekday videos. Otherwise, we'll see you again one month from now with our next Climate Watch update.